Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. How you doing? What's good? What's new? I'm Mariam. I am sipping on some wine today for today's episode of Faves X Fails for the month of August. This is a video, a roundup video, in which I talk about all of my favorite makeup products and apply them to my face. But it wouldn't be a Faves X Fails if I didn't also talk about the products that did not work for me and not apply them to my face because I didn't like them the first time. Why would I try to apply them the second time? I'd rather just tell you about it. As always, I come prepared with notes. I talk about prices. I tell you why these products work and why the others don't work. If you don't watch any of my videos, but you're seeing me for the first time, this is the video to watch. If you want to know about makeup products, if you want to know about what's good, what's bad and everything in between, this is the video that you need to watch every month. So tune in. Also subscribe if you aren't already, hit that notification bell and now that I've said all that let's get into this phase X fails for the month of August are you ready I'm ready cheers Clink. so today I am double prepared not only do I have my meticulous notes as always I also have my glass of wine hopefully I won't get the Asian glow but I need it for today because I'm filming this video at an odd time it's late at night usually I film my videos earlier in the day so cheers to me and also cheers to you all right so let's begin I don't actually have a favorite primer this month in the primer category, but I do have what you would probably consider an all-time favorite primer at this point, the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. This is what I've been using instead of primer or for a primer lately. I use various different shades. Sometimes I use the universal shade if I don't want to change the color of my foundation, if I'm wearing something sheer or whatnot. In this case, I'm gonna be using shade seven, which kind of matches like the rest of my body. Not so much my face because my face, although it sees the sun, it does not see as much of the sun as the rest of me. So I need to match it. So I'm gonna do this quickly just to prep. This one I like to apply kind of across my face, like across my oily pore zones and also concentrating in the perimeter of my face just to give me a little bit of definition. This for me helps control my oils. It helps my skin stay matte all day. Basically better than a primer. And it's very, very sheer. So adding just like a sheer tiny amount of product won't necessarily affect the tone of your skin. Like sure, I'm adding a little bit more on my forehead just so I can round it out and a little bit more along my cheekbones. But for the most part, I'm keeping it fairly sheer. Not just this month's fave, but an all time fave at this point. I reach for this every day that I wear makeup. It is so good. But let's actually stick to this month's products. So in the foundation category, I have two foundations. One is an obvious fave. The other one, not really a fave. I guess a fail, but it's not so terrible. So maybe I shouldn't complain about it. But anyway, let's start with the one that I do like this month. It is the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation in the new packaging. This is a $29 product. Feels weightless on the skin, but this is a full coverage, more glam type of foundation. So this is something that I like to apply sparingly because I'm not really like into a full coverage look lately. I like the fact that this foundation now comes in a squeezy tube. I'm telling you, it's really hard for me to talk when I film late at night. I don't know why. This from Spotify. Alexa, stop that. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, Alexa stop. stop. Is she sick? Clearly something wrong with her. Also, why do I have an Alexa in this room? I didn't, I did not say your name. Don't you dare. Anyways. As I was saying, this foundation I really like. The formula of this is the same, or at least it feels the same as the original Bounce foundation, but the packaging is different. This is a squeezy tube, so you can get maximum product out of this tube, which I think is great. Also, because of this foundation, I've been reaching more for my actual Beauty Blender sponge, which I don't often use, but in this case, I'm using it. So that's been fun for me. So basically with this one, because I applied it so sparingly, because I still want my freckles to shine through, I'm kind of just like rolling it across my skin. So as you can see, I didn't apply the foundation to the center of my face, only to the perimeter. I find that that's where I have the most trouble, AKA skin concerns. That's where I have my acne scars, discoloration. But then in the center is where I get very oily and that's where my pores are enlarged because I get oily there. But someone in the comments recently said that I complain about my skin way too much, that maybe it's not deserving of all that much complaining. And you know what, maybe they're right. My skin has been good to me. 
lately. Thank you, Skin Gods. So basically, this is a foundation that you can build up to full coverage, and I mean full glamorous coverage if you need it, but with the Beauty Blender, especially when it's dampened, you can easily shear it out and make it a little bit more wearable, a little bit more medium coverage for every day. The shade that I am wearing here is 3.70 Warm Olive, and the color is tan honey. I think this is a pretty good match for me right now. As I said before, it is the summertime and I get much more tan in the summertime than I do in other months. I know this is not self-tanner. I've actually been to the beach at least 10 times this summer, possibly even more. I might actually have to go and check on my Instagram, though I don't actually take a picture and post every single time. But I've been hearing in my comments lately, people questioning my skin tone. I've been hearing it a lot on TikTok, like people are confused why my body is so tan and then like my face isn't. People also saying that I'm self tanning, which I do do in the winter time, but I absolutely do not self tan my body or my face in the summertime. But I do self tan certain parts of my hands because I do have a skin condition that I'm not ready to talk about yet, but I do use self-tanner on my hands just to even out my skin condition. So that's the only place where I will actually use it. And of course, if I want to do like my contouring hack around my mouth, I do that too with the self-tanner. So that's literally the only two purposes that I use a self-tanner for in the summertime. Hope that answered all of those pesky little questions that I've been getting lately. Skin is looking really, really good. Skin, you deserve a compliment. But also how nice is this foundation? It's just really natural. It looks like my real skin. It's covering up all the imperfections and it doesn't feel like a mask and doesn't look like a mask. So I'm liking this one. So now on the other hand, sadly in the fails category, but I will say this is not a bad foundation. I'm gonna have to give it to Lancome Tidal Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. Let me just give you my experience. I did review this on my channel like a few videos ago. I did not have my shade. I was sent some very questionable shades, a neutral and a cool, which I was like a little bit perplexed by, especially given the fact that the brand Lancome and I go way back. We work together extensively. They definitely know what my shade is. So I just thought like it rubbed me the wrong way in the sense that I felt like they lost their personal touch. Like that job of delivering shades or communicating with the people that they work with. I guess that was passed on to an agency who doesn't really get into details. And so I just felt like that was like strike number one. But strike number two was the fact that their shade range for this foundation, which <clears throat> by the way is $47, the shade range was actually rather limited. Only 30 shades for a brand such as Lancome, which is a massive, super well-known, very popular heritage brand from France. It's been around for over a hundred years, I wanna say. So for them to only have 30 shades of a foundation, I just think it's not good enough. Moreover, strike three is that I could never really find my right undertone in any of the Tante Dole foundations. I always had to mix like two or sometimes even three shades just to get the right warmth, the right tone, and just like the right kind of color, I guess, for my skin color, you know? So that is weird, this is weird. And the fact that they still haven't fixed it, the fact that there's still like not enough olives, the fact that there's not enough yellow undertones in their foundation range, it's um, it's not good, it's no bueno. Mm -mm. So I guess, although this was a really nice product, I did test it out. It was not my shade, but I was able to make it work. And this looked really nice at the end of the day. And again, by no means is this a failed foundation. I think a lot of people will actually like this if you can actually find your shade in this foundation. So not a fail, but out of the two of these, this is a fave. and. This sadly is a fail. I hope you know what I mean. But I still love Lancome, which is why my expectations are so high. Moving on to a concealer. I'm gonna whip out an oldie, but a goodie, and probably my most favorite concealer of all time. Tarte Shape Tape wins the crown. Always a fave. Just like the most perfect coverage, perfect consistency, long wearing, 
does not settle into lines, does not get greasy, does not get streaky, does not get gross by the end of the day, does not oxidize. Mm -mm. This is a winner in my book and has been for so long. So this is a $30 product. I believe this was once in the $25 range, correct me if I'm wrong. I was a little shocked to see it being $30, but then again, not shocked because it's a great product. It has a cult following for a reason, they're great. So I'm just gonna blend it out old school style with my beauty blender. I'm using shade medium, which is like my all year round shade. I feel like it works in the summertime if I want to brighten, but it also works in the wintertime if I want to just match. And also this is just such a full coverage concealer. Look at this, look at this. But it looks so damn good. Like I don't wanna use anything else. This is the one that has been working forever. I like to try different concealers every now and then, but I always go back to this one. Although I do also like the Fenty Bright Fix for like a very, very natural under eye brightening, but those are like two totally different vibes. I wouldn't necessarily pair the Fenty with the Beauty Blender Bounce, you know? Like they have to match somehow. The intensity has to match. This is perfect for me and my very oily skin, but I've heard some people with drier skin not be as fanatical about the Tarte Shape Tape as those with oily skin. So just beware, keep that in mind. Now in the fails category, this was a product in the concealer product section that I kept going back and forth with. I tried it, I didn't really care much for it. Then I actually ended up liking it by the end of my makeup application. Then I ended up not liking it at the end of the day. And basically after trying it several times, I finally realized that this new CoverGirl Simply Ageless Triple Action Concealer is just not my cup of tea. This is a fail for me this month for the simple fact that it oxidizes very, very evidently, very strongly. It oxidizes dark. It's really hard to determine what your actual shade is. Whatever shade I tried in the video where I was testing new makeup ended up not being my shade because it oxidized and was just looking really, really dark under my eyes at the end of the day. Sad to say, I'm not gonna be trying it again. Although it is kind of affordable. I've seen it anywhere between 12 and $18 from Ulta to Target and everything in between, but it's it's just not that great. I don't want to apply my concealer, set it with powder, like it at first glance, but then have it look really dark, really tired and puffy at the end of the day. That's what I feel like oxidizing concealers tend to do. Just not a fan, didn't work for me. So I'm gonna pass it along. So I've got another fave, kind of in the concealer category. Joe's Road The Face Pencil has been my go-to since I discovered it. This is so good. First of all, I gotta say, I really love the consistency of this. This for spots is kind of like the perfect go-to little pencil. I'm using shade nine right now, though I probably need something a little bit darker. Basically, this is great for just like tiny little superficial marks or spots. Let's say you have a freckle that you don't really like, you wanna cover up, or maybe you have a dark spot from a pimple that's still healing. This just makes it go away easily. It doesn't add too much texture on top. It doesn't actually enhance whatever bump you have or whatever perfection you have happening. It just easily masks it. This is a $25 product. I believe there are 25 shades of this. But honestly, I think this is genius. It kind of just blends in with your foundation. You can wear it on top of your foundation. You can put it on top of your powder and it won't go anywhere. Very, very versatile, very intuitive, just like a grab and go type of product that I love. I love easy, intuitive products. And this one from Bobbi Brown, the woman, the makeup artist, the icon. This is legitimately one of my new favorite discoveries. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and and set this face. I think I'm ready to set the face. Maybe I'm ready for another sip of wine. Hmm. All right, so to set the face, I'm just gonna use this uh, Makeup Forever Ultra HD setting powder in the shade Banana 2.0. This is like a lighter color. I find that this powder tends to look a little too glammy because it is a matte powder, but I think for the sake of today, the fact that I'm using a fuller coverage foundation, a fuller coverage concealer. I think this will pair well, but I don't reach for this one often, although it is good. I'm just gonna set, set in between my brows, nostril folds, chin chin, and then I'm just gonna swirl whatever's remaining in this cap and just add that everywhere lightly. Just tap it around. You see how matte it is? I like it, but there's a time and a place for an all matte face, you know? Next is brows. For the brows, 
I think I finally got the hang of the Schwarzkopf got to be brow gel. Everyone seems to be obsessed with it. And it is a favorite of mine for this month. So I'm gonna use it in my brows. This does take a second, and by a second I mean a minute, to actually become tacky and solidify. So I still prefer my Makeup by Mario Master Brow Gel and or my Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. Still prefer those over this one. But this one, I gotta say, has been amazing for my baby hairs, which, by the way, are much thinner than my actual brow hairs, and they're a lot easier to manipulate, which is probably why I've been liking it. It's a little bit harder for me to get my brows to glue down with this product, but it's not impossible. I just really have to saturate and work it in there. I haven't laid it down yet, hang on. So this is a, what, $15 product? You can get it on Amazon. I believe I got mine on Amazon. Of course, I'll link it as I do with all of my faves and all the products that I'm reviewing. These are my affiliate links. Once again, I don't think I've said that lately. So let me just remind you. All right, so once I've got this product in the brows, I'm gonna kind of like try to glue it down by holding it down at first. This is harder to do once you have your foundation on. It could potentially get messy and they could like peel off. Takes a little bit of patience, which I will say, I am not a patient person. That is not one of my virtues. Some that I gotta work on for sure, but you know, I am that New Yorker that gets pissed at tourists for walking slow in front of me when I've got somewhere, got somewhere to, be. to be. So yeah, so this product definitely takes a little bit more patience than some of my other favorite brow gels, but it does work once you give it that patience, once you give it a little bit of love, finessing. You see that? Kind of successfully glued down. It's a fave because, well, everything else I tried wasn't better than this, but it's not like my all-time fave, you know? But an all-time fave is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. Love this one, so super, super, super inexpensive. Works, does the job, fills in the brows quickly, easily. No need to practice patience. Just extending it here. I haven't really mastered the thinner 90 style 2022 brow with this product just yet. I just think it takes a little bit more practice for me, but what I have been able to do is just like a regular natural with cleaned up kind of laminated brow. So there you have it. This is it and this is the product. So now moving on to some eyeshadow palettes. I gotta say, this month was a tough month for eyeshadow palettes. I don't think I have a favorite at all. But there are four eyeshadow palettes that I did try this month. So let me just go over them. So my most recent trial was of the Urban Decay X Marvel Studios She-Hulk eyeshadow palette. This green beauty right here that actually wasn't so green on the inside. In fact, it only had one really green eyeshadow and it wasn't even that green. And then it had like a green gold. The rest were just a bunch of shimmery shades in the shifty kind of category, like a bunch of pink purples and brown purples and some matte shades. So to me, they kind of missed the mark just because no matter what look you do with this palette, they will all be the same because essentially all of these metallic pop shades give off the same sort of vibe, unless you pair them all together, which, you know, could be fun for some people, but I just wouldn't do it. So to me, this wasn't interesting enough. This wasn't on theme enough. And I don't even know that much about the She-Hulk, but this to me just felt a little lackluster, especially for $45. I don't know, some people have been saying that Urban Decay kind of fell off ever since Wendy Zomner left the brand. She is the founder. She founded the original Urban Decay, but she hasn't been there for several years. And I feel like it kind of shows. Sad to say it, I still love Urban Decay for its legacy, for its history. This was just what it was. Another palette that I kind of liked at first, but then I had a bad experience with is actually the Jaclyn Cosmetics Strawberry Feels palette. This one is $34. Everything is very pinky, but neutral leaning. There's some rusty shades. There are some mattes and uh, there's one shimmery shade. Of course, of course, of course, I went for my favorite day date over here, which is like a bright pinky coral shade. I slapped it all over my lids without reading the fine print which said that that eyeshadow was actually not meant for eye usage, ugh. And by the end of the video, of course, my eyes were itching, they were scratching, I was wondering why. And then 
I looked at the package and I realized that I slapped on a shade that was not meant for me. Now, of course, this is not gonna happen to every single person, but my eyes, for some reason, are very, very sensitive. My lids are kind of on the thin side and my eyes, eyeballs actually feel the itch. They start burning and they start tearing. So that totally ruins the makeup and this feeling continues until I wash the makeup off. So even though I created a cute look with this, it was a waste, I had to wash it off. So that kind of brings me to a question. I've noticed a lot of people have been asking in the comments, why, why do they even include these not for eye usage shades in eyeshadow palettes that are meant for the eyes. Granted, some people's eyes are not sensitive, but shouldn't we be inclusive to everyone, even those with sensitive eyes? I'm just saying. All right, the next palette that I tried was the ColourPop East High in collaboration with Disney's High School Musical, which to me, I don't know, seemed like kind of like a recent movie or like a recent past movie that I hadn't yet missed, you know? But this was basically the color story. Definitely fun, there's some pops of color, there's some wearable shades. You could do a lot with this palette actually, but is it unique enough? Is it innovative enough? Is it something that I care to keep in my collection? Probably not, even though this is a $24 eyeshadow palette. For 18 shades, that's definitely not bad. But I guess I don't care enough about the High School Musical. Maybe I just don't care about all these collaborations with like motion pictures, superheroes, and whatever else. Neither one of these palettes that I just mentioned were bad quality. They performed well. I'm just not seeing anything extraordinary. I'm not seeing anything innovative. I'm wanting more, is what I'm saying. All right, and the final palette that I did try this month was the Huda Beauty Love Fest for $29. So this is one of their Obsessions palettes, nine pan palettes. This was very reminiscent of 2017, 2018 beauty YouTuber type of makeup with the very, very warm matte shades that you can create warm cut creases with. But what was cool about it is that it included a few of these really shifty metallics almost like foil shades and also a swirl shade. Now I'm so nervous, I gotta like read if all of these shades are actually meant for eye usage. Cause looking at them, I'm like, man, this shade is very similar to the Jaclyn Cosmetics, though not as bright. And what about these foils? Should I actually put them on my lids? Let me actually see. This was probably my most favorite of the four palettes. I guess maybe because I liked the look that I was able to create with it more than all the other looks. But hang on, let me actually just look it up. Love, fast. Yay, these are eye safe, you guys, I'm so happy. Okay, so that is the palette that I'm gonna be using today since it is my favorite one out of the four. And it is a favorite one this month, but I have a feeling that if maybe there were better competitors, perhaps this wouldn't be a favorite of mine this month. Or maybe I'm just very picky this month, but also maybe because there's been a lot of really weird makeup lately. More on that soon. Okay, so I'm gonna prime my lids. I'm using the Rare Beauty Eyeshadow Primer. I'm gonna do what I wanted to do with the Jaclyn Cosmetics, Strawberry Feels. I'm gonna slap this corally shade all over. God, I hope this is eye safe. It says that it is, but I don't know. I'm just not trusting anyone anymore. This feels very, very, very pigmented, very creamy. I like this color. I'm not going for anything too dramatic today. I just want it to be a wash of color, something very summery, very wearable. We still have a few weeks left of summer, so don't start talking about pumpkin spice lattes. Not here, not on this channel. You will get booed. I am not that girl. I'm a summer girl all the way. The winter is my enemy. We are not friends. I'm not into the cold. All right, so how can we jazz this up? Let's see. I'm gonna take this uh, Laura Mercier eye crease brush, dip into this orangey shade. I'm gonna place that right here in that outer corner and just lift towards the tail end of the brow and a little bit along the socket, a little bit more warmth, a little bit more pizzazz, a little more pop and just wash it out. Alrighty, shall we move on to some liners? This month I did like the MAC Brush Black Brush Stroke 24 Hour Liner and also the Huda Beauty Life Liner Quick and Easy and Very Brown. I've been actually reaching a lot more for brown liners lately. This one is $19. It is brown, it is very precise, it has a bristle tip, which is something that a lot of people like. Very, very tiny and precise point, which is another thing that a lot of people like. So today I'm, I'm just gonna go for like a classic brown cat eye. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna thicken that wing a little bit just to like lift it, pinch more like that. And that's about it. Like I said, this one is also good. Similar tip, but black. These are also great if you want to add little lash extension twiggies. 
This one is $23. All right, and now for the mascara, I'm gonna go for my Essence Double Trouble. It's waterproof, cat hair. Damn, these lashes look really nice. I almost don't wanna apply falsies, but I have favorite falsies this month from none other than Auric. Dun, da, da, dun. So what I like about these $30 lashes is that you actually get two sets of lashes in each of the packages. You get a shorter lash that's meant for smaller eyes or for Asian eyes, and then you get like a full strip that's for larger eyes or for any eye shape, basically. That's like the standard size but I have been using the smaller ones, and what I love about them is that you absolutely do not need to cut them, which is just so refreshing to me because I always cut my lashes. So anyway, there are three styles. I already used this style glass wing in one of my previous videos. This is like a very natural looking style. So today I wanna try a different style. I'm gonna go for this one called Clouded. This one looks really, really cute as well. Just really nice and natural, but snatural. I'm gonna grab the smaller ones. Uh, yeah, how cute and easy. These are like the perfect length for me. I love these. They're so dainty and they're so wearable. Okay, so you thought I was gonna skip blush, didn't you? Didn't you? Not gonna skip blush. I have a favorite and another not favorite, but not a fail, not a fail. Fail is just like too strong of a word for some of these products, but obviously these are my monthly faves x fails, so you can't have one without the other. So if there's a fave, there must be a fail, so I guess here goes. My fave blush for the month of August is actually a ColourPop blush in collaboration with the High School Musical. No, I am not missing the High School Musical just yet, but these blush shades are beautiful. They are so flattering, so stunning. I love these two shades. This one, the cooler one, is called Freaky Genius Girl, and this warmer one is Playoffs. I like both of these shades. I just feel like they are so very me. I feel like ColourPop powder blushes really have this perfect consistency, this perfect mix of not too pigmented for a blush, but just enough pigment for a blush. I'm gonna use this big old ice cream cone shaped brush. I'm gonna dip into this one, play awesome. I'm gonna smile and just hug my cheek. You see what I mean? It's just the perfect amount of pigment. And it's so easy to pop on with like a really, really giant brush. That's what I like for my giant cheeks. I know some people like a more precise blush application brush, but I like a really, really huge one just so I can stamp it and be done with it. Boom. And now because you can't have a fave without a fail, this is faves, X fails, I gotta say, my fail blush for the month is sadly the Huda Beauty Love Fest. Yeah, I know. So hear me out. So whereas this is a $14 blush, one of these is actually a $39 blush. And yes, the packaging is really, really cute. It says love on the actual pan, but then when you flip the mirror, it says share the. So together it's share the love. This is super cute, genius. I've never seen this before personally, but a lot of you guys have. You mentioned that Chanel came out with a blush like this earlier in the year. So this is not unique. This is not the first, but that's not even why this is not my fave. The reason why it's not my fave is, well, I guess this looks better in the packaging than it actually performs. To me, this cream blush was fine. It was good enough. It was cute when it came to colors, but it wasn't enough for me to justify $39 for a single cream blush. Generally, I am someone who has oily skin. I'm not like a huge fan of cream blushes as it is. They have to be really, really excellent quality. They have to set to matte. This one felt a little bit balmy. It didn't necessarily set to matte. It felt a little bit greasy. And also, I just thought it was a little too overpriced. All right, so now moving on to the highlighter category. We are almost done. We're almost at the end but I promise you I saved the best for last. Okay, so for the highlighter, I am gonna be using my fave for the month, Bobbi Brown Peach Glow Highlighting Powder. This one is pricey, it is $52. $52 for a highlighter, but I like it. It's a fave because it works and it's really pretty. I'm gonna use this Lime Crime brush, swirl that in there and swirl that right on top. This gives just the most beautiful glassy glow ever. 
It's very, very fine. It does what it's supposed to do. It basically just gives you this very luminous, but not a texture type of glow. And even though this does contain some micro fine glitters, by no means does this enhance your texture in any way. I actually think this is quite forgiving. So this is a fave for me. It just feels really easy and it does what it needs to do, which is why it's my fave. It's pretty, even though it's pricey. On the other hand, I gotta say, I was not too impressed with the new Shimmer Matchsticks from Fenty. I found this formula to be just way too dry for a solid highlighter. I mean, although you can definitely use this to add a little bit of a glow, I found this to be too solid and maybe not easily blendable when you're applying it to larger areas like your cheekbone. I think for spot highlighting, like down your nose bridge or maybe like in the corner of the eye, perhaps this might work, but not even. I just feel like this was okay but not amazing, not super duper amazing. So these are $28 each, they come in different shades. There's some darker bronzier shades for different skin tones. I actually like the bronzier shades a little bit better to add a glow to my overall face. But just like the lighter shade ice cream wasn't anything cool or amazing. So sadly it's failed, but the next product that I am going to literally recommend to you guys is probably my new favorite discovery. It is definitely my favorite product for the month. It is my top fave for this month's Faves X Fails. And it is actually a lip product, which means that this product is super duper unique in its category because there are so many different lip products, but in order to make one stand out from the next, it's gotta be something really special. So without further ado, I present to you my new favorite lip balm slash lip color combo. I am talking about Keys Soul Care Lip Balm in the shade Inspiration. This has been my beach go-to every single time. I know this looks very dark, like it's wine colored lipstick, but actually it is just like the prettiest, the sheerest, the most flattering shade of mauve that I've ever seen. And it feels so comfortable on the lips. It is so, so smooth. It just gives you this pretty berry-like pout that by the way, lasts all day. It feels hydrating. This actually has coconut oil and a blend of a couple of other oils, which keeps your lips feeling hydrated and smooth all day. I literally never reapply this. I always wear it to the beach. I apply it once and somehow, some way, this stain stays this way, unless of course I wanna build it up. So usually I like to pair it with my Charlotte Tilbury Medium 2 Pillow Talk. I feel like it's a really, really good match. But of course you don't need a lip liner to wear this. You can wear it just on top. You can blot it out with your finger for just like a little stain pout. And also, like I said, you can build it up if you want more of a pigmented, precise kind of lip look. It just makes me feel dressed up without wearing lipstick, you know? I still feel like I'm very approachable, like I could still have my wine, if you will. But it just looks put together, and this color is so, 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 so flattering. So now finally, for the last product in today's roundup, is another lip product, or is it a lip product though? I think you probably already catch my drift. This next product is most definitely a fail from Fenty Beauty X Mischief. So these are the people who are actually responsible for Little Nas's Satan shoes, that's right. So Fenty did a collab with this Mischief and it is this ketchup or makeup lipstick kit, or is it? So this thing has gotten everyone talking basically inside of this, I don't know what this is, maybe it's art. We've got some ketchup looking packets but only half of them are actually ketchup, which you cannot consume, by the way. The other half are actual lip glosses, Fenty lip glosses. So you get to have your pick at whether you apply gloss or ketchup to your lips. The concept is definitely more like an April Fool's type of Instagram post rather than an actual serious product drop. So I'm not really sure what was the purpose of this. I don't know if they wanted to create some sort of a sensation or if they wanted to get people talking, but a lot of people were saying that this is very wasteful, this is stupid, they don't really get it, and I gotta say I agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it made me laugh, 
that one time that I actually did put the ketchup on my lips but that was just a moment and that moment is now gone so is this wasteful yeah probably and for $25 I don't really care to actually purchase something like this. So yeah, this was a fail for me. I love Riri, I love Fenty. Not sure if I love Mischief just yet, but this is just my experience and this is my take on this um, collectible. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, that is my roundup for the month of my favorite and not so favorite products applied to the face, as you can see, to create this look using my faves. I actually wish I had somewhere to go because this look is quite cute. The skin looks really good, really fresh. All the colors are working together. I love the berry pout with the sort of coral orangey lids. I love the lashes, the liner, the brows, the skin. Everything is working for me because all of the products that I used today were from my faves pile, but not my fails. So with that said, you guys, I am going to sip on my wine while I zoom out and invite you to check out more of my videos over here. You know, these two right there, the two of them, I put them there for a reason, so please click on them and I'll see you in my next video. Peace out and I'm out.